Hello! We have arrived. Artist, archivist, VTuber, and tonight, coffee guy. You can call me Tiberius Vanderfield. And tonight, I am joined by... Shuppy Shups. Just Shuppy Shups. Indeed. Yes, how are you doing today, Shups? I'm doing good. Just good. busy with commissions. Mm -hmm. I, um... I have too much on my mind, and I'd like to take it easy in the uh, in the in the cafe. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a shame because you're working here tonight. So, ah, uh, I just got done with work. Okay, such that's... is life. <laughs> yes. Also, give me a second. I've been messing around with some of my uh, settings, and I'm getting a little bit of rendering lag. It looks like. Uh oh. So let me see if I can fix that. That's not it. Alright, that has not fixed it. Um... Is he it? I am missing... Not, like, a lot of frames, but I'm missing more than I would like to be. That's not good. Yeah. While I'm working on this, uh, anything new with you? I had a great Christmas. I made a lot of food. Good. Bread, made some pizza, all with uh, the same kind of garlic confit. Uh, garlic confit is so good. It's like mm. it, you you uh, put garlic cloves in a vat of oil, uh, mm -hmm. like really good, not the cheap kind, like really good oil. Mm -hmm. And then um, any specific kind of oil, or just like uh, motor oil? <laughs> yeah, motor oil. Yeah, that, that's right. Uh, it's synthetic motor oil, valve, uh, Vaseline, whatever. <laughs> no, um, California, California extra virgin. Oh. Hmm. All right. It would seem that the issue that I was having, I am no longer having. So that's that's good. But yeah. Nice. As for myself, my holidays were pretty good as well. I received a frying pan and a recipe book, and a uh, bottle of maple syrup, among other things. Well, a bottle of maple syrup. I like it. Yep. Hope it's not the cheap. I hope it's like the organic, really good stuff without the high fructose corn syrup. It's pretty good, yes. Very good. Yes. Yeah, other than that, I suppose there's not a whole lot for me to report on. Um, but yeah, like I said, I've been messing around with some of my settings, figuring out some new things. Uh, my notifications are broken, so you're not going to see any of those, but, uh... Oh, you didn't see the 10,000 bits I donated? How dare you? I did not. But yes, I will... I also ready to do with 100 viewers, by the way. <laughs> Say hi, everyone. Hello. They're, ver they're very, they're very quiet. They're very, very quiet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um... Where, what was I going to say? Something, I'm sure. But yeah, anyway, I'll try to get that fixed by by next stream, ideally. Okay. But yes. That should more or less cover us. I think I already mentioned we're playing Coffee Talk tonight. Um, yeah. I suppose I'm ready to begin if you are. Let's do it. All right. Then let us get to the gaming area for video games. Yeah. Hmm. Why am I Hold in the on, booster seat? Why'd you put what? me in the booster seat? I'm like right in front of you. You know, I'm a big I'm a big girl, you know. Well, <laughs> if you're need... if you're much bigger on the screen, you'd be blocking the video game. Is that more important than me? Anyway, <laughs> uh, I think that uh, this is the wrong day. <laughs> Yeah, I, I had think... to go back to get a, a, a screenshot for a thumbnail, so yeah, I think we started the wrong day. I see. Alright, we are time traveling once again. Team Friday, travel. October 2nd, 2020. Yeah, 
this this sounds this sounds familiar. This news. Yeah, this looks good. Okay. Yes. Now we should be back to business. Um. How about the how about the today's story? Oh yeah, we can also do that. Right, right. So actually. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was October second that we had, that we're on, right? I think so. Hmm. I'm surprised that Freya is still writing for the paper, considering that she got fired. Maybe she had some stuff like... Uh, I'm assuming that stories are written in advance. Probably. Because, uh, like... Like, let's say you get, uh, like something bad happens. Or someone is in hospital... Like, an editor is hospitalized. You want some... You want some material in case that happens. So, uh, you have some leverage, and just in case... Um, something bad happens like that. Th Fair that enough. makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm assuming that's what's going on here. It's just pulling up uh, either the backlog or previous stories from other days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still getting a few frame drops, but I'm getting less than a percent <clears throat> now, about zero point one percent, where I was, whereas I was getting one percent earlier. So I think I'm just gonna have to live with this and kind of figure it out later. Uh, anyway. I think I read the last one. So you can read this one if you would like. Okay. Give me a sec. Happily ever after ever after ever after ever after ever after ever <clears throat> Sorry. Part one. Do I want to grow old with you? No, I don't want to do that. But I do want to be with you here in this moment. Stuck in a terminal limbo, in the infinite loop of this exact hour forever. Hell yeah, I do. That's probably the last time Romeo remembers having a really meaningful conversation with Juliet. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Just like any other story, this one also has a beginning. It begins with an introduction. Romeo is a young man of twenty. He comes from quite a conservative but not yet out of touch family. In other words. They're just like almost every other family in the world. He hates the names his parents gave him, and he hates it even more knowing that his life so far is fulfilling all the cliches of his fictional namesake. Falling in love with a girl named Juliet is really just the icing on a cliched cake. Juliet is a young woman of 20. She also comes from a quite conservative but not yet out of touch family. In other words, they're also just like almost every other family in the... In the world! <laughs> she loves the names her parents gave her, uh, although she hates it, the fact that her life so far is fulfilling half the cliches of her fictional namesakes. Falling in love with a boy named Romeo is unfortunate, but she has no plans to die stupidly over. But of, of them, study at the, both of them study at the same university, and they're definitely not the type of people who naturally choose to be friends. Fate, however, in the form of a hip, young lecturer with an over-enthusiasm for assigning group projects for an unfortunate sense of humor. And an unfortunate sense of humor is what brings them together. A simple group assignment is what introduces our young Romeo and Juliet to each other. Even after they first their first fated meeting, and the many, many more meetings required to finish the assignment, there's no sign that Romeo means, means anything more than two to Juliet than a friendly acquaintance she's spent a lot of time in the library with. Nor, honestly, does she mean that much more to him. In fact, after she made an ill-judged joke about the liter uh, literary elf in him, she probably means significantly less. But as time goes on, and as the group assignments keep coming without the lecturer ever assigning the partners, Romeo and Juliet become closer. They both begin to see things in the other that they haven't noticed before. Though for Romeo, that fact is rather frightening. How could I fall for somebody like her? Her name Juliet, no less. I can't accept it. Mine's just playing tricks on me. Again and again, around and around, his thoughts chase themselves whenever he sees her. Today is Monday. Romeo has a class he needs to attend. However, something is different. Normally a relatively anxious fellow, he finds going to a class requires a willpower. Today, however, he finds himself hurrying to get there. 
he knows why, of course, but he refuses to admit it to himself yet. The first thing Romeo does when he opens the door is to look for a specific table. The table where Juliet always sits. To his unacknowledged disappointment, the table is empty. Fuck! There is Romeo under her breath. He doesn't curse because Juliet is not there, of course. Rather, he curses because noticing this was the first sign thing he did upon entering the room. After sitting in his usual place, Romeo reopens his book and begins reading. Every time someone opens the door, Romeo turns immediately to look and quietly whispers a curse. Again, he is not cursing because he is disappointed it is not Juliet. He's cursing because he turned to look. A few minutes before the class begins, Juliet finally arrives, announcing herself and her friend with a brain laugh as she does so. That sound used to be one of the most annoying sounds in the world, at least as far as Romeo was concerned. But today it brings a small smile to me. Fuck! Curses Romeo again after he realizes he just smiled at that sound. Is Romeo in love? He probably is, but he doesn't want to admit that. Falling in love with Juliet is dangerous, extremely dangerous. They come from completely different backgrounds. They have different skin color. And they worship different gods. He has no problem with interracial relationships. Of course he doesn't. Of course he doesn't. But he never expected it to happen to him. This simply will not. I need to talk to you. He looks up. Juliet is standing over at the table. Her jaw is set, but her eyes are worried. And completely forgets all about his problem. Uh, what, what's up? Can you keep a secret? It's really important. Sh sure. I guess I can. Good enough, because I really need someone to talk to. So, Juliet sits down and begins telling her story to Romeo. She talks about the problems she's been facing over the past few months. How they affect her study. How about, about how he's not the first person she's talked to about this. On and on. And Ro Romeo listens to every word. Eventually, Juliet stops talking and sits quietly. Romeo thinks that she looks somehow lighter than she doesn't than she did before she began at talking. He doesn't know how to react to what she, she told him. He tries giving her some advice, really stupid advice, thinks as he said it. But he believes it's probably much better than just listening and nodding and watching him walk away. He doesn't think he wants her to talk about uh, awake oh doesn't he doesn't think he wants her to walk away from him. He thinks about this. One thing's for sure. Juliet trusts Romeo as a friend. They've shared a secret now. Even though Juliet has shared the same secret with others before him, this still makes Romeo happy so damn happy. This is a long one! <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. How pathetic am I being happy because someone I like came and told me she's... Romeo thinks and shakes his head at a dog shaking uh, off water. After sharing something, everything she had wanted to share, Juliet starts talking about lighter topics. Soon they are joking freely. Dark mood of earlier almost completely disappeared. Just before Juliet leaves, Romeo asks her something. Why did you tell me all that? Well, I don't really know. I think you can trust me. You're one of those rare few people who can talk to people directly without sugarcoating it. It's refreshing. She shrugs. I guess that's what, what Juliet said is true. But Romeo, amusing. Even though he normally speaks directly to everyone he knows, he can't do that with Juliet. He is not himself when she... Or so he... After that conversation, Romeo falls even more helplessly. It's stupid. Someone who rarely falls so hard for anyone. But Juliet is driving him crazy. The fact that she makes him feel the closest thing to love he's felt in years. Yet a big wall of cultures, norms, and other societal traditions stand. Hurts even more. That is, of course, if Juliet is even into him anyway. As weeks go by, Juliet and Romeo become closer. They start telling each other stories more often, but all those sh short stories are limited to their courses, their friends, 
and anything at all besides their feelings. She's not into me. She's just a neighbor. Friendly to everyone. Romeo keeps thinking. And when he's thinking about something, then suddenly Juliet comes and sits at his table. So you wanted to tell me something? True. He always sent a message to Juliet, telling her he wanted to talk about it. Oh wow! <clears throat> Driving straight in. That's all not nothing all important actually. Come on. It's not like you'd be you'd to be so indirect about things. What's wrong with you, boy -o? <laughs> Romeo actually called Juliet to talk about her attitude res recently. She's been weird, at least in Romeo's eyes. And it feels like she's getting farther away, removing herself from any student activities she's usually partake in. Juliet answers all of his questions. All his thoughts and concerns about how she seems to be removing herself from all other side activities she manages to shrug off or easily explain. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm obsessing over everything she does, thinks Romeo. Well, the pit opens up in his gut at the thought. Is that all? Anything else you want to say? Questions? Fair is fair. Yeah, you sound a little bit distant from the microphone there, Sheps. Oh, sorry about that. Hello. Do you know that I used to like you? The words came out of from Romeo's mouth, out of the blue. He's horrified, even though he recognizes that it's a lie. He still likes her now. He even he doesn't even know why he decided to confess his feelings right at this random moment. Oh, sorry. Uh, never mind why he confessed with half a lie. It's not like... It wasn't planned at all, but when he heard Juliet say anything else, well... It's definitely one thing Romeo has been planning to say to Juliet for the last few thousand eons. Or as normal humans measure time since around eight months ago. Juliet shows a flash of surprise and then says, No, I had no idea at all. Why? Why what? Why do you like me? Or do you like me? Or did you like me? I mean, there must be a reason. Oh, of course there is. Romeo opens his mouth to tell her and pauses. He blinks slowly and closes his mouth again. Or not. I don't know. I think there is, but I'm not sure. I'm not sh I'm sorry. I'm talking gibberish. Juliet does not respond to that. Romeo doesn't even dare to look at her directly, but he can see out of the corner of his eye that she looks dumbfounded. He takes a breath and opens his mouth again, hoping for a lightning strike, divine inspiration or instant death. He isn't picky. Okay. Okay, I just... I see you, have a, I see you as a really strong person, okay? You have a big girly side, but you're also a really strong, independent person. Okay, I get the girly part, but what makes you think I'm strong? Well, just look at how you work with all your assignments and organizations. I definitely could never deal with anything as well as you do, ever. Oh, come on, everyone has something they're good at. You can do things I can't. That's pretty normal, you know. I know, but still, I'm not sure. It's probably what attracts me to you the most. When he says that, Romeo tries looking at Juliet, just for a moment. He saw a twitch of a smile on her lips, but dared not even hope. He ascribes it to his imagination instead. So what's next then? Asked Juliet. To be honest, I don't know. I said this because I can't keep hiding it forever. I need to say it to you even though I know it. It's impossible for me to ask you out, considering all the differences between us. Juliet pauses. Oh, of course. You don't need to say anything, though. I, I just need to get it out of my system. That's all I wanted to say. Well, okay then. I have something else to do. You don't have anything else more to say, right? Yes, I, I mean, no. I mean, that's all. Juliet nods and says goodbye, then quickly walks away. After Juliet leaves, Romeo lets out a heavy sigh. Ah, good work there. That's one hell of a lot of old baggage just let go. And a whole hell of a lot of new baggage I can replace it with. 
Here's an interesting fact about our Romeo. During the whole conversation, he hadn't been able to keep him from shaking. It's an old habit he just can't let go of. To his belief, he, they'd been sitting during the whole conversation, so he could hide his tremor. Still, even though he feels intense relief after telling Juliet about his feelings, his hands are still trembling. He has to wait a couple of minutes before he can walk away himself. So now, after Romeo's long-awaited but ultimately useless confection, what's next for Juliet and her Romeo? Funnily enough, neither she nor Romeo ever mentioned it again. At least, not to each other. Romeo did eventually tell some of his friends about the, his feelings for Juliet. But what about Juliet? Romeo didn't know anything about how she was coping with this revelation. He expected that she'd probably told some of her friends, as he has told his. But that doesn't even matter, he tells himself. We're not meant for each other anyway. Watching from the outside, nothing seems to be changed between them. They still talk about their classes, about their friends, about shows they watched and books they read. But they never even mentioned again the time when Romeo revealed his feelings for Juliet. At first, Romeo had thought that confessing his feelings would mean letting go of a big boulder inside his heart. And as it turned out, it only transformed the boulder into a restless rock monster asking for more. Eventually, he realizes letting Juliet know about his feelings isn't enough. He needs to have her. He wants to hold her tight. He wants to stare her into her eyes and tell her that he loves her to Pluto and back. He wants to hear her say, I love you too. He wants to kiss her. He wants to run her way for, with her to a place where no one cares about uh, her, their differences and just sees them as a cute couple in love. He wants to do all the good things in life together with her. And more than anything else in this earth, he simply wants her. The feeling is killing him. How could she be acting normally about what that revelation? Does it mean his feelings mean nothing to her at all? The peak of his emotions came one day when her hero was falling asleep. Suddenly, his body is drenched in sweat, his heart beats too fast, and his thoughts only run to one thing, Juliet. He wants, no, nothing so pro- Prosaic. 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 I'm not sure what that means. He needs Juliet. He doesn't care about anything else, about the traditions, about their families, about anything. There's only one thing he needs to do tomorrow, and that is to confess his feelings again to Juliet. This time, however, he's going to ask her out. If she feels the same way, he'll ask her to just give it a try and fight the world together. He resolves that his is going to take a leap of faith, and it will be the first thing he does the next time they meet. <coughs> oh, wow! My gosh! That was quite a bit there. Yeah. Yes. So anyway, to answer your, I guess it wasn't a question, but to inform you, uh, prosaic means literally like prose, which is to say writing that, you know, resembles normal speech roughly. Okay. So like the, the way that you would write a novel versus a poem. That makes sense. Yes. Anyway, let us, let us get uh, into the things. Also, I, w I will say, you do seem a little bit quieter today than usual, Sheps. I am right next to my mi mic. I don't know if there's anything different. Hmm. <laughs> well, I am right next to my mic. All right, that's a little, that's maybe a little bit too close. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm not doing anything different. Hmm. It's right next to my face. Yeah, that might be another thing I have to look into. Oh, well. Uh, anyway, uh, back to business, I suppose. <clears throat> Welcome. Good evening, Mr. Baileys. Evening. Am I the first customer tonight? You are. That's new. <laughs> Freya's not here? She said she's coming later tonight. Got something to do with meeting some fellow writer friends? Why not do it here? It's her favorite place, right? Her friends have visited this place from, from time to time. 
Just not as much as her. <laughs> writers gathering, huh? I wonder what writers talk about when they're hanging out. Writing, maybe. <laughs> I've known them for some years now. She has this habit, you know? If she said they're friends, it means they're just hanging out normally. But if she said they were writer friends, they're probably talking about work. Either giving each other feedback on their latest drafts, or sharing and validating ideas. Interesting. They even use code words for meeting up. Well, it's not like that. She doesn't even realize that it's what she says. I just picked up on it. That's even more interesting. Why are you always so observant? It's part of the job. Well, why is that? People come here every day. Some of them aren't as talkative as others, but their body language can be loud and clear. They can tell you a lot of things, whether they need a friendly ear or just want to be alone. It applies to what they're ordering as well, because, you know, sometimes what people want is not what they need. Well, that's deeper than I would have thought. So, what are you reading from me now? I won't say. <laughs> Why? I would break the charm. <laughs> the hell was that? I guess I can say this much. Uh, whatever I say to, or do to our customers, it's always related to what I'm getting from their body language. Including our interaction now? Including our interaction now. Now I can see why they don't want to, you didn't want to share it. Even that was enough to make me feel like I'm naked in front of you. By the way, I haven't ordered anything. What are you having tonight? Hot chocolate. With ginger and cinnamon. I heard that's a good drink for a bitter heart. Guessing chocolate, ginger, cinnamon. I would assume so. What what we said earlier about what people want not necessarily being what they need makes me feel like there's some sort of trick to this. But yeah, ginger and cinnamon. Um I don't know, you think it's worth looking deeper into it or should we just take him at face value? Let's take it at face value and see if it's something special. Alright. Sip. And yeah, he did say chocolate, ginger, cinnamon in that order, correct? Yeah, he said hot chocolate with ginger and cinnamon. Okay. I don't know why oh. I just got button prompts for oh, some my, reason. My, I hit my controller on accident. Ah. So I guess I have control over the game. Fair enough. You want to serve the drink then? Sh sure. <laughs> I did it! You did it. <laughs> Good job, chefs. Oh, bitter heart. It well, really is called a bitter heart. It has a little fucking heart in it. Yep. Here you go. Hmm. You're a pretty romantic person, huh? Spending extra time decorating this drink. Only for special people and special drinks. Say, Shapirius. Tell me about yourself. What do you want to know? Anything. How old are you? Old enough to open a coffee shop. <laughs> oh, man. I guess I should say sorry for asking that. It's all right. But that's the only answer I can give. Now you're making me wonder. What should I ask next? Oh, God! Hmm. Rhea looks okay. troubled. Hello, everyone. Hmm. Uh, eh? Why are you both looking at me like that? Rhea? You... look... Mm, horrible? No, I don't! Yeah, you do. No, I don't! Shut up! Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna have to echo our dear barista on this one. Yeah, 
You do. What happened? <laughs> You'd be better asking what I didn't happen. Because the answer would be a proper sleep. And they said progress on my draft. You need a rest. And me All right. What happened? What happened? Um, I don't know. My internet's been a bit weird lately, and I guess that's just uh, an example of it. Yeah, um, yeah, we were troubleshooting this last week, and we were having internet issues, so... Yeah, interestingly, though, last week we were getting a entirely distinct internet issue. <laughs> uh, anyway, also, are you uh, still connected on Parsec? You're not. I'm trying to connect now. Ah, gotcha. I love how when I said the word deadline, the internet went down. <laughs> kind of apropos, very, very appropriate mm -hmm. timing. All right. Are we ready? Uh, I'm ready if you are. And miss my deadline? Hell no. Sorry, Baileys. I'll be able to keep you company. Because I have to finish this thing. And for that, I don't need a whole lot, a lot of espresso. Are you sure about that? <sighs> you really should just rest. No. Get, get something to help you sleep. No! Espresso! But please. Alright, this definitely uh, feels like a, a uh, like situation where we shouldn't needs. be taking her at uh, face value. Yeah, probably give her something that she needs, not what she wants at this point. Mm -hmm. Let's find out. Give me a second. Milk feels like a reasonable base to me. What's something, what's something that's relaxing? Tea, tea does still have caffeine in it, even if it's green tea. But I don't think that would necessarily be the best option, though. Yeah. Um, uh, definitely milk. You want uh, You don't want to give her espresso. Of course, of course. Honey sounds good. A milk, cinnamon, honey. Hmm. It is a drink called the bedchamber. All right. Sounds very appropriate. <laughs> I like the the art on this one. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> hmm, I did just get an achievement for serving the wrong drink for the first time, but you know, whatever. Well, you're doing her a favor. You're not making her situation worse. Fair enough. Here you go. What the hell, dude? This is even coffee. Drink. This isn't what. Drink. <laughs> uh, okay. It's on the house. <laughs> Better be. How was the meeting? That's pretty good. A lot of good advice. It also means things, and not a small number of them, mind you, need to be rewritten. Oh. Oh. It's not that bad. Rewriting is part of the process. It's just that. It's just. It's just I'm going to my usual car. Though, thanks to your drink, I'm not sure whether I'll be stable to stay awake or not. She looks horrible. She does. 
But don't worry about her. She'll finish it. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm not sure if that will show up on stream. <laughs> it didn't, no. Okay. Uh, at least it didn't show up on my stream. I didn't see it. Okay. Uh, this isn't the first time she's acted like this. No. But this time the stakes are pretty high. Hmm. Hmm? So, uh, what brings you here today? Hmm. I'm not even sure myself. I had no plan tonight. And this place just came to mind. Out of the blue. I'll have to thank your subconscious, then. I guess you should. Uh-oh. Oh. I'm not sure whether I should, uh, thank it or not, though. Hi, Lua. Hi, Baileys. No, you first. <laughs> I was going to ask, um, <clears throat> how are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. How about you? I'm good, yeah. <sighs> um, I think I need to order something first. Oh, oh, of course, of course. Go ahead. Hi, Shapirius. What are you having this evening, Miss Lua? Gingerbread coffee, please. Oh, that sounds adorable. So I'm guessing coffee, I'm guessing ginger, and... What else do you put in gingerbread? G gingerbread is usually made with cinnamon. Hmm. I mean, have you ever had gingerbread? It's filled with brown sugar and cinnamon. I don't know that I have, uh, now that I think about it. That no, feels like something I... Ginger and cinnamon, yeah. Yep, usually that's what the calls for. Hmm. Yeah, I can't think... I can't say for certain that I have had gingerbread, now that I think about it. There it is. There it is. That looks yummy. Here it is. Thank you. My grandma used to make this drink for me. It reminds me so much of her. It reminds me when I was growing up with my family. How's work? It's going pretty okay. You? I'm not taking any new jobs at the moment. Because, well, you know. Yeah, I get it. You have enough in your savings, right? That's a very Lua thing to ask. But yeah, I do. Thanks for that. Thanks to that last annoying job. It went well in the end? I kind of did. That paid me on time. They paid me on time, at least. And the pay was amazing. How long are you planning to take a break for? I don't know. Until my problems are settled, I guess. And what problems are those? Hmm. I'll tell you this. But don't tell me, okay? Not even Shapirius, who's standing in front of us? Than Shapirius. He's just a cardboard cutout of a of a barista that was pulled from uh, stockphotos.com. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there's this girl. I love her. We've been going out for a few years, but I'm not really sure where we stand now. How can you not be sure? We had an argument a week ago. It wasn't anything new. 
but somehow it has escalated uncontrollably. Why is that? I assume both of us were just tired, knowing that we are fighting against centuries of tradition. We haven't really talked since our last fight. Leaving things unresolved is not a good idea. But I can't bring myself to start the conversation. Why? Even I'm not sure about that. Pride, maybe? Our tiredness. Or knowing that chances are we won't be able to find the best solution for anyone, everyone anyway. <sighs> Bailey's? I have a question. Go ahead. What do you think she's feeling right now? To be honest, I don't know. She's not like me, that's for sure. Thankfully. Why? At least it won't affect her professional life that much. I'm glad I'm a freelancer. It means I can just take a break from work without so many problems. I'm not a professional as her, you see. I think you're wrong. Really? If I were her, I would find it difficult to live life as usual. But I'd put on a lot of masks. Just to hide the feelings I was going through. That sounds difficult and uncomfortable. It is. But, a friend told me once. You gotta do what you gotta do. Must be a pretty cool guy. Yes. I love how her, her phone has little devil horns on it. It's cute. Indeed. What's next for us, Bailey's? I don't know, Lua. I. I met some new people this week. Including that supermodel? You knew? That girl in its corner told me. Yeah, including that supermodel. And how does that make you feel? Like a fool. What? He said a lot of things that I've been trying to avoid thinking about. A lot of... truths. He's a bit like you, you know? Attitude-wise. You'd get along with him. Opposite attract, but simul similarity breeds contempt. Ever heard that before? A lot. From a certain hipster elf. <laughs> and after listening to that guy, what's your stance on... You know. Us. I'm not sure, Baileys. What about you, yourself? Had any similar experiences this week? I have, in fact. You met a vampire, and I met a werewolf. <laughs> what are the odds? What are the odds indeed? I mean, pretty good, considering our clientele. Yeah. What did your werewolf say? Hmm. Not much, to be honest. But he made a good point about the importance of family. Alias? I know I've been stubborn about you wanting me to make peace with my family. And I know what's made I don't know why that's I I know why that's very important for you. But Freya said something that kinda hit me hard. What was it? I was just using it as an excuse to escape my family. When I actually wanted want to do that anyway. For myself. Hmm. You know me, Baileys. I do. And you know how I feel uncomfortable with people leaving their families. Makes me a jerk, I guess. I get why you think that way, Lua. Blood is thicker than water. What should we do? Yes, Baileys? Please let me leave my family. I'll 
I'll try to get your family to accept me. That sounds like the easier thing to do after all. Like you'll lose your immortality. You'll be an outcast among other elves. An outcast from a bunch of overly pretentious people? Sounds great. You'll live a long time. But you won't have the perfect health and perfect life that's the elven privilege. But that's not a perfect life without you. What if our relationship doesn't last? You'll have lost everything. You'll blame me. Lou, I would never blame you for anything. If you were talking about who I used to be, that guy would never have blamed himself. A hundred reasons for why something failed, but never anything to do with him. But that won't happen between us. You know why? Because I've learned so many things by being with you for ten years. It made me a better person. So, you don't need to worry about any of that. Because right now, you're the most important part of my life. I don't need an immortal life. Because without you, it, would be a, it, wouldn't, it won't be a life worth living. Alias. I... I believe in you. Aw, cute. Aw, yay! Got an achievement for it, too. Nice. Lua. Alias. I feel like we've been living in a soap opera. <laughs> it seems so. So, what's our plan? Tomorrow, Saturday. Are we going on a date? I'm going to my parents' place. Oh. And I want you to come with me. What? That's so sudden. Did you already have plans for tomorrow? Oh, well, no. It's just... I'm not prepared to meet them. You'll be fine. You don't want to tell them about this first? It'll be alright. Well, they'll never forbid you for dating other races. They're not big fans of elves, that much is true. But you can prove them wrong. Hmm. Okay, this could be a good first step. It is. It's set, then. I don't know what'll happen tomorrow, but we can think about it. And anything else. Later. I'm with you on that. So, does that mean you don't mind me? I had my doubts, but now I'm sure. I can trust you. Are you still staying at Farron's house? Yeah. You're staying with me tonight. Oh boy. <laughs> huh? What about your roommate? He's away for the weekend. Taking a long weekend getaway until Sunday night. <laughs> Fates is on our side, it seems. Hey, Shapirius. Yes? We're leaving. Thank you so much for keeping up with us this past week. Pleasure was mine. We're off then. See ya. Thank you for coming. <laughs> oh, she, she ah, looks fine. She lives. That was pretty intense. Oh, you're back in the real world. I just pretend not to notice. They're like one of the main reasons why I like writing this story. Oh, why I'm writing this story. So I'll have to see their struggle too till the end. It's important for the writing, you know. That's cold. What? It's not like that. It's just that. Uh, but yeah, that was cold. 
I'm sorry. Well, you look better than before, though. For now. I can't tell you how I feel until it's done. And I don't... Uh... What the hell was that? Oh, God! Ah. Hi. Gala! The fuck's... Is Gala's a werewolf? Give him a Gala a hat! Of course he's a werewolf. We've always known he's a werewolf. Well, now he's the werewolf form. Give him a Gala hat! <laughs> Whoa. Freya, get over here. This wolf? Is, is that him? I think so. Uh, welcome, sir. Are you crazy? You can't treat a werewolf in a fury like a normal customer. Maybe you can't. Trust me. He must have his reasons for coming here. You can relax, sir. Do you need anything? Something to calm you down, maybe? Alright, uh, consult the recipe book. Uh, Galahad? I wonder what happens if you don't give him a Galahad. Well, um, I can't consult the recipe book, so, uh... You can't consult the recipes? No, uh, he just, like, yells, and I can't do it. Uh, I mean, it's tea, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you like I, I to think again and give us uh, a precise answer? Uh, I can roll. I can roll. My, I can do a knowledge check. Give Please. A I, I got a crit. Okay. It, okay. I remember. It's tea, milk, and ginger. Tea, milk, ginger. That order? Yes. Heard. All right. Tea, milk, ginger. All right. Here's your... Roar. <laughs> nice. After seeing the reaction to the drink, a hundred percent. Whoever he is. <laughs> this place survived. Thankfully, yes. But I think I need to close up shop early. I uh, don't want to cause any more ruckus. And I need to clean up some of the mess anyway. Good idea. Can you get back all right by yourself? I'll manage. Take care on your way back. You be careful, too. See you tomorrow. See ya. <laughs> all right, we survived. That was... crazy. That was a crazy way to end an episode. A it day, was. Rather. <laughs> I'm assuming we're gonna ha uh, we're gonna be meeting up with Gala to tomorrow. <laughs> One hopes. Uh oh. The evening whispers. Oh, interesting how it it says on this on this paper it just says the evening evening whispers with one S where it says two S's otherwise. Coachella 2020 do's and don'ts. What is Coachella like? What is it like a festival or like a music yes. festival? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Last time we established that uh, uh, Neil is going there. Okay. The Atlantic ambassador talks of fire regarding immigration. 
Weird Stein Cup. Right. Hmm? So, wait, what was happening with the mermaids and the mermen? Um, there's some sort of immigration uh, issue with them. They are not being accepted warmly, as I understand oh, it. I see. Oof. Yes. Weirdstein Company criticized for unfair depictions of werewolf in their latest box office hit. Oh, they're making an ex uh, ex uh, uh, exploitation film of mm. werewolves, it seems. Oof. -a. Well, I think that leaves us uh, at the end of this day. Yeah, that was intense. Indeed. Yes. So, I suppose we might as well head back to the room. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like this, uh, this stream's gonna be sort of a weird one. I think we're pr I'm probably gonna have to get it up on VOD, uh, as quick as I can. I've not <laughs> been, uh, I've not been great about that recently. Uh, I've been a little bit lax, but, uh, this will definitely be an incentive to do it a bit more properly. Yeah. Yes, once again, thanks as always for joining me, Shops. Of course. It's a lot of fun. Yes. Uh, is there anything that you would like to say before we start to conclude things, or I guess as we conclude things? Um, give your werewolves some tea and ginger milk and ginger uh, like cocktail to calm them down. You don't want them to stop around and break things in your house. Well, we did a uh, gala did establish that it's a bit different for everyone, so that might not be necessarily a hundred percent accurate for every werewolf. Well, listen, well, you gotta try. You gotta at least try it. If it doesn't work, then resort to other drastic measures. You, want to, you don't want to take a werewolf's life if you don't have to. Mm -hmm. They're probably they're probably not. They probably don't want to. They probably don't enjoy being a werewolf. It's not like they want to be in your house breaking shit. So, yeah, mm -hmm. that's my thoughts. All right. Yes. Yeah, so anything you would like to say about your own stream? Uh, tomorrow, I mean, the first stream of the year, uh, the first stream of the year, uh, tomorrow, I'll be doing, uh, excuse me, Splatoon, some Splatoon grinding, nice. and, uh, some art after that. I'll be doing, uh, I'll be drawing some memes. Nice. Uh, no, actually, no, I'll probably be working on the last commission of, uh, of my commission. Doing Predorus. I'm working on my ninth one. Nice. Yeah. Yes, as for myself, um, or did you have anything else you wanted to say first? No, oh, that's it. That's it. Uh, okay. Make sure to treat your baristas well because they will save your life one day. Mm -hmm. save, your, save your relationship. Mm -hmm. with, a nice cup of, with a nice cup of coffee and or tea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as for myself, uh, we should be looking forward to another Ark Knight stream on Saturday. Hopefully resuming that as well. But yes. Yeah, I didn't didn't get any any streaming done over the sort of holiday season as I was kind of hoping for, but that's because, yeah. Things, you know, holidays happened, and I was yeah. present for them, you know. I didn't quite know what my uh, schedule was going to be, basically until the day of, and even on the day of, uh, a lot of the time. But yes, anyway. So, um, yeah, Arc Nights, Saturday, probably 2 p.m., roughly. Um, I think that should basically cover us. Yeah, I think, I think I'm up to date on VODs. You know, I mentioned that that was uh, something that I hadn't been super prompt with before, but I think we're up to date now. And yeah, that should be everything that needs to be said about that. Chaps. Yes. Would you like to suggest a raid target? Um, sure. Uh... Excuse me, I didn't have a lot of water during that stream. Sip. Not as much as I usually do, anyway. Well, if you're 
you're thirsty, that means you're already dehydrated. So go get I'm some not, water. I'm not feeling particularly thirsty. I just sort of came intellectually to the re uh, uh, realization that I hadn't drank water that whole time. I have two targets. Mm -hmm. One is Vimi Me 33. Fantasy 14 online. Yep. And there's also Rook the Knight who's playing Void Crew. I'm actually interested in that. I've never heard of that game. Alright. Yeah, I don't have a strong preference, so if you want to see Void Crew. Sure. Rook the Knight. So Rook like the chess piece. Mm -hmm. The Knight. Like a knight in shiny armor. All one word. Rook the Knight. Alright. Rook the Knight. My favorite chess piece, actually. Nice. I don't play a lot of chess. I should play it more often. I like to open with the Carol Khan if I'm black. Yeah, so I the knight. The French defense. Uh, if I'm playing white. Yes. The raid message is, as always, or sorry, the customary raid message is, as always, we have arrived. If I can spell it properly, there we go. Yes. Uh, I think that should basically cover us. I already talked about my plans. You talked about your plans. Yeah, that should keep us uh, well uh, underway until next week. Yeah. All right. And I suppose we will go and get the raid going. So, thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you have had a fine night. I hope that you will continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you'll be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much, and farewell. Let us get this raid underway. Right. Bye-bye! Farewell.